Hey everybody, this is Ashley with the Civilian Marksmanship Program here with our very first podcast. Woohoo! Please bear with us and be kind as we figure this thing out, but we're going to use this as a way of bringing you the latest on what we have going on with our programs, uh, along with plenty of other worthwhile content that we'll pick up as we go. For those who might not be aware, the Civilian Marksmanship Program, or the CMP for short, is a federally chartered 501c3 nonprofit national organization dedicated to training and educating U.S. citizens in uh, responsible uses of firearms through safety and marksmanship training and also competitions. So the CMP as it exists today was established in 1996. The history of the program actually dates back to President Theodore Roosevelt in 1903. The CMP sets its highest priority on youth activities that build personal growth and life skills. All year long, the CMP offers competitions and learning courses around the country for rifle and pistol and air gun for uh, all experience levels. Our largest event of the year is the National Rifle and Pistol Matches held at Camp Perry in Ohio, where our headquarters is located. The national matches have been held at Camp Perry since 1907 and attract thousands of competitors each year. Our office in Anniston, Alabama holds one of our two 80-point air gun ranges that hosts weekly and monthly events. The other 80-point range is located at our Camp Perry location, and both of those ranges are full of our electronic targets, so kind of cool. Alabama is also home to CMP's Talladega Marksmanship Park, which is open to the public daily and holds 500 acres. That's right, 500 acres of outdoor pistol, rifle, and shotgun opportunities, as well as a line of our outdoor electronic targets that you've, I mean, you just got to see these things. They're so cool. Teledega is home to one of our three CMP stores where you can find rifles, competition accessories, and lots of other things that pretty sure any marksmanship enthusiast would be excited to sort through. The uh, other two stores are located in Anniston and also at Camp Perry. We have so much going on. I could sit here forever and explain everything we have. So if you want to learn for yourself or see for yourself what we have, go ahead and take a a visit to our website at www.thecmp.org to learn about all of the many, many programs we have to offer right now. For those who don't know me, I'm the writer for the CMP, so you may have seen my byline on a good amount of our stories for the last gosh, almost eight years now. And uh, some of you may know me from walking the firing lines with a a camera in my hand at many of our indoor and outdoor events around the country. Uh, it's, uh, It's been a wild ride and I've been grateful for every minute of it and also thankful for every incredible person I've been able to meet. And my hope with this podcast is that it will give all of you as listeners a little more of a personal relationship with us. So, in this first podcast, I talked to Brad Donahoe, who is now our Small Board Program Manager. I had this conversation with Brad back in 2020. Everyone remembers that year, right? Despite this odd year where we haven't been able to have many competitions as we would have liked, uh, we've been very busy within our offices, coming up with new ways of bringing our programs to you, and our growing Small Board Program is certainly a part of that. Some of you in our air rifle world may know Brad as the guy on the microphone, and in the last few years he's also called some of our high power matches at our travel games events and even at the national matches. So I'm sure you'll recognize his voice once you hear it. Even though you may have heard him or even seen him at our events around the country, Brad is actually based out of our north office at Camp Perry in Ohio. And he knows what he's talking about when it comes to small bore. As a former collegiate athlete from the University of Kentucky and even going way back, I won't say how far back, Brad, he was a CMP summer camp counselor while he was in college. So he's been a CMP for a long time. In this podcast, he tells us a little more about the influences that went into CMP's revitalization of small bore at the national matches. And he also talks about the new opportunities available for our small bore competitors, including a distinguished badge program and even match sanctioning, which is just new 2020. Oh, one more thing. Um, we should mention that the small bore program has recently added a postal event for 2021, which runs from January to April. 
where individuals fire upon special targets issued by the CMP, and then those targets are submitted back to the CMP staff for scoring. That small bar postal event includes three position and prone matches from 50 feet, and it's just a fun way for adults and juniors to compete against others from around the nation, but from the comfort of their own home ranges. If you want to learn more or if you want to register, um, registration is open until March 23rd, 2021. You can find that on our website under the Compete drop-down on the homepage, and then look for the CMP Small Board Postal Program link. Um, I apologize ahead of time for a few tiny blips of, of bad audio connection in this podcast, but I assure you, this is all good info ahead, so stick with us. I may also need to apologize, too, for my Northwest Ohio accent, but, I mean, I, I just can't help it, so I'm sorry. So, without any further ado, here we go. Here's my conversation with Brad and a look into our CMP small board program. Hey, how's it going? All right, how are you? Doing well. Uh, sitting here in the office, getting a little bit of work done. Awesome. How is the weather up in... Uh... Northwest Ohio. Uh, well, we had that. We had a week of really warm weather, but it's starting to feel uh, seasonal again. So we're we're getting a little chilly up here. Yeah, the wind off the lake bothering it all yet? No, not yet. But uh, give it a few weeks. <laughs> all right. So, Brad, tell us um, a little bit about what you do at CMP. Yeah, sure. Um, it's kind of evolved a little bit over time, but uh, my current position at CMP, I'm the small board manager. And, uh, but it, I also have a few other responsibilities, but as a small bar manager, my job now is to, uh, operate a bunch of, or create a bunch of small bar matches and, and see about revitalizing uh, a once popular sport. Great. And you used to shoot small bar yourself. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I've got a little bit of history in, in the sport. Um, I used to shoot small bar when I was a, when I was a kid, um, that's how I got my start in shooting, and then I eventually went on to uh, compete for a JROTC in Louisville, Kentucky. And after that, I was recruited by, or I, I attended the University of Kentucky, um, where I was. I competed there for four years, and where we shot both air rifle and small bore. And uh, it was after that that uh, I was hired on by CMP. So I've been. I've been at CMP since uh, 2007. Wow. It's a long time. Yeah, it's been a, been a long time. Yeah. It goes back quick. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so tell me a little bit about this, this small board program. How did it um, begin at CMP? Where did this idea come from that we needed to build our own small board program? The idea of small board at Camp Perry or just small board in general definitely isn't new. The reason CMP is now running a small board program is because of uh, – the national small bar matches here at Camp Perry leaving in 2014. And with that move, uh, we saw a, a pretty drastic reduction in the number of small bar competitors across the country. So um, a lot of the competitors reached out to the CMP and asked us to, if we would consider running our own small bar national matches. And uh, it took a few years, but in 2018, the CMP tasked us or tasked me with conducting a small board national championship here at Camp Perry once again. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty tall task, um, but that's the origin of the program. And ever since then, uh, you know, 2018 was our first year. We ran another national matches, champion, national match small board championship. In uh, 2019, we had big plans for 2020. And of course, we all know the, the pandemic shut every, everything down. So that kind of, uh, put a damper on things, but, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see how it grows. Uh, once we get things back to normal, uh, after the pandemic kind of dies down. So obviously a lot of work went into creating these new series of matches. Talk a little bit about the, the outside entities and individuals you use to influence, uh, the development of these programs and matches. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it, although I do, I do have a little bit of knowledge about Camp Perry. I only shot it a handful of times. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of leaned heavily on the experience of some of the, uh, the experts out there, the ones that have been coming here since they were kids, uh, guys like, uh, Mike Carter and Aaron Gestel, and also, uh, a phenomenal shooter herself, Rhea Kempley and many others, uh, members of the army marksman unit, um, Hank Gray, George Norton, those guys helped me out. But, uh, really what I wanted to do was reach out to them and ask them what was important, uh, for us to run a small bore or a successful small board ship. They provided the guidance, um, and with the help of many of the people here at CMP, we were able to pull off what was considered a uh, pretty successful champion. So as a small board competitor, Brad, um, what are sort of some of the things that you feel are important to you to put in the program that you know will also be important to other competitors who are looking to do some CMP small board matches? Sure. Um, so here at Camp Perry, um, it's important to understand that we've got two different groups of shooters. And what I mean by that is we've got the adults that have been coming here since they were children. And uh, and we've also got the large population of junior shooters. So when we're creating small bar matches, we've got to think of both, both of those groups of people. So as an adult coming to Camp Perry, is is one of the greatest accomplishments a, a shooter can have. So Camp Perry has got a lot of history and tradition. So it's important for me as a manager to recognize that history and to create something that those competitors are going to recognize and appreciate. But at the same time, I've got a population of junior shooters and these junior shooters are growing up in a um, an era where technology is advancing faster than you, you can blink your eyes. So we've got to find a way to appease those junior shooters who are used to high tech uh, methods of scoring and uh, newer concepts that you might find in the Olympic games that is not typically traditional to Camp Perry or any of the national matches of the past. So balancing those two things are the most important for me. But I would say tra- tradition is a big one. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what sort of uh, successes have you seen with the program? Um, I know you talked about it a little bit, but of these things that you're trying to implement into the program, do you feel like um, they've come across fairly well so far? Sure. Um, our first year at the national matches, you know, we had 70, 70 or so three-position shooters and roughly about the same in in prone. Um, and we knew it's going to be a, a slow build, but for our first matches, we thought it couldn't have gone any better. And, um, we saw the, the match grow the following year, which is always a good indication that you're doing things the right way. And 2020 was already setting up to be a, uh, a, a banner year for us because an important thing we need to think about is to get juniors into our competitions, they need to have as many shooting opportunities as possible. So what we did was our three position air rifle championship. We've scheduled it directly before, immediately before the small bar championship. So they can go from one match to the next without having to make multiple trips and and parents don't have to take as much vacation. So I think uh, in terms of scheduling, that was a, a huge success and we received a lot of positive feedback because of it. Um, unfortunately the situation with COVID shut all of that down, but, um, scheduling has been great. The matches that we're running, we're running some traditional matches that everyone's used to. So the adults are, are very happy with, with our, uh, schedule and match format, but then we're also adding things that the juniors are used to like, uh, finals, you know, finals have never been shot here at Camp Perry, but juniors are used to finals. So they want to, they want to shoot those. It's more opportunities for them to, compete and give uh, college coaches a a chance to look at them. So Mm -hmm. um, I think we've done a fairly decent job of balancing tradition with uh, modern small bore shooters. Yeah. And um, some people might not be aware of this, but you're also trying to bring some of the new things you're trying to bring in are um, the way that you even score small bore. You're trying to enhance that. Um, Maybe talk a little bit about the, uh, the app that you all use for, for scoring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first, the, the biggest hurdle um, for running m- matches at Camp Ferry is is scoring. Um, when you have 
the potential for hundreds of competitors shooting on paper targets, you pretty much have to have an army to score all of those targets and get results out quickly. And that's just something that we weren't exactly set up to do. Um, so we reached out to uh, Shooters Technology, the creators of the Orion scoring system, and we're in discussion with them. And, and thankfully, they were able to create a scoring app that uh, was able to score all of our targets. And that was very revolutionary for the outdoor small board game. Um, and, and if you'd like, I can, I can tell you a little bit about how it's done. Um, yeah. So the targets, they each have a, um, a shape on them so that a camera phone can recognize the target and adjust for um, any sort of calibration issues that you might have from taking a picture uh, standing six feet away. So the way it works is our range officers, they each have an iPod. We have a wireless network on the range. After the competitors shoot the targets, we send our range officers down range first. Each range officer can handle about 10 firing points, and uh, they will go down with a preloaded roster and a scoring app. And all they do is take one picture at a time. They take a single picture, move to the next target, take another picture. And each target has a QR code that uh, the app or the software recognizes um, and it knows which shooter it belongs to. So the range officer takes a picture and it immediately sends that target wirelessly to our stat office. So uh, we have about four to six scorekeepers at any given time. And as soon as the pictures are taken by the range officers, they immediately start scoring them. And in theory, and we've seen it happen, um, before the competitors return from downrange and retrieving their targets, their scores are already posted online. Wow. And that's just something the national matches or uh, any form of shooting besides short of electronic targets has ever seen. You just, you don't get results that quickly. Mm -hmm. It just completely changed the way uh, we, we scored and the, the added benefit um, that you get from scoring that way is, it's all very consistent. Um, there's no opinions on whether or not it's in or out. It's it's computerized. So you've got a, a paper target, you've got an electronic score, and the scores are online immediately. And they can the competitors can look on their phone and decide whether or not they believe it was scored correctly. Mm -hmm. And one of the hurdles that the national matches had before was if you disagreed with the score, you would have to wait in line and, and go challenge it with the with the scorekeepers and and they would determine whether or not it was scored correctly and it was it was all a matter of opinion now something that we're very proud of doing is we want everything to be as transparent as possible and we want the the shooter to walk away extremely confident that their shot was scored correctly so we're uh, we're encouraging shooters to come in and question everything if they have something that they believe was uh, scored incorrectly I tell them, you know what, go grab your target. Um, I'll bring you into the computer. I want you to look at it, and I will give you a magnifying glass for your own target, and you make the call. You tell me if you think that our, our computer system scored it correctly. And I will tell you 99% of the time they look and they make their own decision for for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they walk away. When you, had, when you had that level of transparency, you have nothing but satisfied competitors. And that's what we've seen in the two years that we've run it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're very satisfied with it. So uh, and excited with the uh, uh, the future of the app too. There's a lot of opportunities that that they have and we have that we can capitalize on to make it even more uh, of a more user friendly experience for the shooter. Yeah. What's great about that is competitors can stay even more focused on the firing line. Just do their thing, get the match completed more quickly, Absolutely. and then they can go home confident that their posted scores are as accurate as possible, thanks to the software. Absolutely. Another great thing that you've brought to the national matches that I don't think you've really gotten to try out yet because of everything that's happened in 2020 
is you've helped put together a small bore SAS, um, a small arms firing school that individuals can attend to learn more about the sport. Yeah. Um, well, we, we were able to do one SAFS program in 2019. It was, it was a pilot program. When we have, when we conduct the national pistol and rifle championships, the army marksmanship unit, they operate the small, small arms firing school. And that is for competitors to come in and aspiring competitors, prospective competitors to come in and try out a sport that they may or may not have uh, ever been exposed to it. So we were, we were trying to think of ways to do something similar for small bore. And uh, when we introduced the, or when we moved the three position national championships, the air rifle championships, we figured there might be some air rifle shooters who have never had a chance to shoot small bore before. So we reached out to the army marksmanship unit. And they agreed that the, uh, the shooters that, had air rifle experience that may want to shoot small bore. This would be a prime opportunity for them to come in and learn a little bit from some of the best shooters in the world. And in 2019, we did that. We had, uh, it was a small class, less than 20 competitors, but um, in the end it was a successful event and we were looking to uh, grow, uh, grow that program a little bit in 2020, but uh, obviously that got shut down, but We're, we're pretty excited with uh, the future of that program as uh, the AMU is once again um, committed to running that program for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's going to be a, a great opportunity that um, competitors will take advantage of once they have that opportunity again, whenever that happens. We've got we've to somehow inject some, some life into this uh, sport because when the national matches moved in 2014 – We look at that as an entire generation of people that would have come here during their high school years that never knew Camp Perry existed. So we've missed out on a large population of shooters that might have returned. Part of part of doing this, the small bar uh, SAFS program is to inject new life into the sport. And uh, Mm -hmm. it's a tall task, but we're we're trying to get it done. Yeah, sounds like you're taking the steps that you need to to work towards Trying that. Trying to. Along with that, we also have a new Distinguished Badge program for, for small bore to recognize those who have done well in the sport and, and are going for that kind of goal. Sure. Yeah, part of, the, part of the growth process for any sport is, or any of our shooting sports is, uh, is the Distinguished Badge program. Pistol has it. Uh, we have a rimfire pistol badge now three position air rifle distinguished badge rifle badges and uh it only seemed uh it it was obvious that we needed to do something similar for small war distinguished badges are not new for the sport but cmp at at cmp we thought it was important to do something as well so yeah in 2020 we implemented that program we've had very few matches as a result of the, the pandemic but that's an opportunity for uh, match directors to sanction their matches through CMP and to get their competitors to start earning excellence and competition points. So what you're referring to are the sanction matches that CMP implemented this year. Haven't had many chances to do that, I don't think, but um, now clubs can host their own sanctioned yeah, small yeah, matches absolutely. Um, for competitors to earn their excellence in competition EIC points towards uh, their own small bore uh, distinguished badge yeah so we've got an online sanctioning program now it's up and running that uh, and we're encouraging anyone and everyone to register their matches with with CMP those matches that can be sanctioned through us the three position small bore champion uh, small bore matches uh, you can shoot a three by 40 three by 20 you can shoot that at 50 meters 50 yards or 50 feet um, so indoor matches can be sanctioned as well we also have prone matches that you can sanction. You can sh- sanction a, a 1600. Um, you can do a two day, four day, uh, whatever, whatever the match director would like to do. Um, and, and on top of those sanctioned events that you can schedule, we also offer small bore achievement medals and pens. So if you're going, if you're looking for awards to give out at your championship or your match, 
you can order medals from us that say CMP small bore matches, and we're happy to send those out to you. So what sort of things do you have working um, for the small bore program for the future? I know you've done so much already and and it's all heading in the right direction. So what, what other things are you looking to add? Well, right now with, um, with the pandemic, it's got everybody thinking outside the box and we're trying to, how do you, how do you run competitions for people when they can't gather at a specific site? So to do that, you know, postals are not new to the sport, but we're, we're going to be introducing a, a postal program starting in January. And hmm. uh, that postal program will be a 50 foot three by 20 competition where clubs or individuals can register the, uh, for the postal. It'll be a small fee and the CMP will print uh, personalized targets for each competitor. They will uh, shoot those targets once they receive them from uh, the mail. And they can either send those back to us by mail, or if they have the Orion scoring system, they can score them themselves and submit them electronically. So that's mm-hmm. typically how our postals run. Uh, it's it's not a new idea to CMP, but adding small bore to it is. So that's, that's something we've got. We've got going on. Um, we're excited that with the possibility of partnering with Ely to run some small bore matches, r- remote small bore matches. We're running a uh, winter home range appreciation series. That was uh, that decision was just made recently and oh. uh, a, very similar to the one we ran this summer. We were allowing uh, matches to be sanctioned at 50 foot. And uh, once again, we're, we're hoping to have some some sponsors for it so we can give out some good prizes to the the winners and also uh, raffle some things off as well. So those are, those are two of the things we have coming. You know, once, uh, once things get back to normal, we've got some bigger plans. We want to go, we want to take our matches on the road and uh, we we're, we're in discussion with the Hollywood rifle and uh, pistol club there in Hollywood, Florida. Hmm. And uh, we're, we're looking to, run a regional championship there i'd like to run something out west so if you're listening and and you've got a good venue for a small bar match contact us uh we're interested so we want to we want to go on the road and run some take the matches to uh the small bar community wow well it's i mean it goes without saying that this has been a crazy year that no one expected we're all we're all making this up as we go Oh uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's kind of it's difficult to run a sport when uh, when nobody can get together and, and compete. But you know we're we're trying to think outside the box. So um, and and also we're hey we're looking for suggestions. If if you've got ideas that you know we can we can do, reach out to us. Right, and if anyone wants to reach out to you, Brad, what what's your uh, contact information? Sure, they can email me um, at smallbore at the cmp dot org. Um, or call my office at 419-635-2141. My extension is 730. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want everyone to know about your small bowl program? No, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it was good. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate your uh, talking with us. And, I mean, be sure to let us know if anything else new comes up. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Thank Brad. Thank you, Ashley. Well, there it is. Now you have a little more info, a little more in-depth look into our small board program. I think Brad is full of a lot of good information, and I'm sure he means it when he says he's open to suggestions. So please, don't be shy. Give him a shout if you have any ideas. He's a he's a really good guy, so no one should be afraid of him. Uh, I'm sure he'll he'll take your suggestions uh, to heart. So so please do that. And I just want to thank Brad again for allowing us to talk with him. And I want to thank you for taking a listen. We'll be back again with more soon. But in the meantime, you can learn more about CMP Swamba Program and everything else we have going on by visiting our social media pages. We have a Facebook and Instagram page that we update daily throughout the week. So check those out. You can also take a look at our website at www.thecmp.com. Dot org. All right, everyone. Well, be good, stay safe, and we'll hopefully see you again soon. <laughs>